Let's get some practice answering questions from old exam papers about true and empirical formulae. Menthol, the substance we can smell in cough drops, consists of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. During combustion of a 9,984 grams sample of menthol, so that's the total mass of the original compound, we get this mass of carbon dioxide and this mass of water produced. Now remember that the original compound consists of a certain mass of carbon, a certain mass of hydrogen and a certain mass of oxygen and the total mass of that original compound is 9,984 grams. Then this burns in oxygen to form carbon dioxide. All the carbon in the original compound ends up inside that carbon dioxide. All the hydrogen in the original compound ends in the water of the product. These are the products. But not all the oxygen in the products came from the original compound. Some came from the air. Now, to get the empirical or the true formulae, molecular formulae, we need to convert this mass ratio here, which we don't know yet, but we need to find this mass ratio. And then we need to convert that mass ratio into a particle ratio. So the first step is to find the mass ratio. So we need to calculate the mass of the carbon inside the carbon dioxide. How many grams of carbon? are in 28,16 grams of carbon dioxide. Our conversion factor must have grams carbon dioxide at the bottom, grams carbon at the top. Both top and bottom must refer to equivalent amounts. One mole of carbon dioxide. One mole of carbon dioxide has a mass of 44 grams, and the carbon in there has a mass of 12 grams. We get an answer of 7,68 grams of carbon. So the original compound contains 7,68 grams of carbon. Now we need to know how many grams of hydrogen did it contain. So we need to know how many grams of hydrogen did it contain and how many grams of, of oxygen. So all the hydrogen ended up in the water that was produced. You can look back to the question and you will see that that was 11,520 grams of water. And we need to know how much of that mass was made of hydrogen atoms. So we multiply by a conversion factor with grams of water at the bottom and grams of hydrogen at the top, knowing that top and bottom are both referring to one mole of water molecules. The whole mole has a mass of 18 grams. Just the hydrogen atoms within there have a mass of 2 grams. Do the calculation, you find 1,28 grams of hydrogen atoms. So we found already that the mass of carbon in there is 7,68 grams. Now we've just found that the mass of hydrogen in there is 1,28 in the original compound. And the original compound has a mass, the total mass, of 9,984 grams. So the remainder must be oxygen. That's how we find the mass of oxygen in the original compound. We cannot just find it from how much oxygen was in carbon dioxide and how much in water because some of that oxygen came from outside, not from the original compound, came from the air. So we can't use the same method for finding the mass of oxygen as what we used for finding the mass of carbon and hydrogen. So we simply get the difference between the total mass and the mass of those substances we already know, the hydrogen and the carbon. So the mass of carbon minus the mass of hydrogen. So we subtract away these two masses from the total mass. The total mass, look back to the question and you will see it is 9,984 grams. The mass of carbon, look back to your previous calculation and you'll see it was 7,68 grams. And here we have the mass of hydrogen on the same page, so that's easy, 1,28 grams. Do the calculation, you find it's 1,02 grams of oxygen atoms. So why did we do all this? We now have the mass ratio of the component elements, but that isn't where we have to stop. We still have to now get the particle ratio to get the empirical formula. So we know that the elements inside menthol are carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and their mass ratio is what we've just calculated, 7,68 grams of carbon for every 
1,28 grams of hydrogen and 1,02 grams of oxygen. We convert this into a mole ratio. How many moles of carbon do you have when you have 7,68 grams of carbon? We use the molar mass of carbon, 12 grams of carbon for every mole as our conversion factor, 0,64 moles of carbon. How many moles of hydrogen atoms in 1,28 grams of hydrogen, and we know that one mole of hydrogen has a mass of one gram. So it's very easy. We have 1,28 moles of hydrogen when we have 1,28 grams of hydrogen atoms, that is, not molecules. How many moles of oxygen atoms do we have in 1,02 grams of oxygen atoms? One mole of oxygen atoms has a mass of 16 grams. Notice how the grams are cancelling away in all cases. 0, 0,064 moles of oxygen atoms. So here we have a mole ratio, but it's not in a nice format. We need to divide through by the smallest number so that at least one of the numbers is 1. We simplify. The smallest number is this one, 0, 0,064. 0, 0,64 divided by 0, 0,064 is 10. 1,28 divided by 0, 0,064 is 20. And 0, 0,064 divided by itself is obviously 1. And we don't need to multiply because by simplifying, by getting one of the numbers to be 1, all the other numbers happen in this case to be whole numbers. So that gives us our empirical formula C10H20O1. We don't write that 1. What's the simplest molar mass of that? 10 times 12 for the carbon plus 20 times 1, obviously that's 20 for the hydrogen, plus 16 times 1 for the oxygen. 120 plus 20 plus 16, 156 grams per mole is the simplest molar mass. And we see that that is also the true molar mass. When they just say the molar mass, they mean the true molar mass. So both the simplest and the true molar mass are the same value. Therefore, both the simplest and the true formulae are the same. Molecular formula is the same as true formula. So number three is easy. We've already found it out. C10H20O. That's both true and empirical formula. Both molecular and simplest formula.